this is the agro electro hydraulic laboratory trainer now we are going to use this one for our lecture laboratory trainer is made for the students how to learn with the electro hydraulic system so it is called electro hydraulic control system just because the combination of the electrical and the hydraulic system is working together for our automation you should understand how does this system works we have here this electro hydraulic trainer so we are going to discuss what is electro hydraulic control system in the diagram uh, we have the components or parts of the hydraulic system let's search with the pump we cannot find the pump the pump is inside and here we can find the motor motor is coupled with the pump inside so this is the coupling this one and the pump is inside this tank so we have here this pressure gauge according to the diagram in that pressure gauge we have this after the pressure gauge in the diagram we have this throttling valve so this is the throttling valve where you increase or decrease the pressure the throttle throttle valve the line goes into the directional valve this is the inlet going to the directional valve and then this one is out Going back to the system, and it goes with the manifold, it goes back into the system. We're in the relief valve here. This is the relief valve, and the filter is inside this tank. That is the main component of the hydraulic system. We have here the sump tank, wherein this is the filling, where you fill up the oil, and then this is the level of the tank. You know how much level do we have? inside the hydraulic tank. These are the parts of the hydraulic system wherein we can start the system only for the hydraulic. And now we go to the controller. For the controller of the hydraulic, we have here the directional valve. Directional valve wherein we have here the diagram symbol. We have the solenoid stated with letter A and letter B. So we have the return spring in between and we have the manual push button. This is the four three-way directional valve. It's uh, being used in the hydraulic system. This four three-way directional valve is controlled by solenoid. We have the solenoid which is marked letter A or we call it K1, solenoid K1. Another one which is marked letter B, solenoid letter B, or we call it solenoid K2. K1 and K2. So the solenoid is controlling the directional valve. We have here the double acting cylinder in which it has a piston inside. So for this double acting cylinder, why is it is called double acting cylinder? Just because here the piston is at rest. Ganito siya. Naka at rest siya. So to make that piston pushed away outward, that way the hydraulic oil should go in here and making the pressure pushing out the piston going that way outward pressure here inside will goes out here now the piston is positioned like this if we are going to retract the piston the oil should goes in here pushing the piston back inward then the pressure here inside this uh, cylinder it will goes out here and goes back to the system. We have here the limit switch. It is called limit switch one and limit switch two, or LS1 and LS2. So now the position of the piston is at the limit switch one because the piston is being retracted, so position inward. Now, if the piston goes outward, going this way, this piston will touch this limit switch two. This limit switch have the connection of normally closed and normally open. We have here the common and we will know later where is the normally open and normally closed of these contacts because there are three terminals of this limit switch. We still do not know where is the normally open and normally closed contacts of these two limit switches. What we just know is if the piston touches the limit switch, there is change reaction of the contacts from normally closed to open or the other way, normally open to close. But in our diagram, we installed it into normally closed contacts. We have here the limit switch. So how do we know the contacts, three terminals, where is the normally open and normally closed? And I will show you 
how to look for the normally open, normal, normally closed contact. And I have here the tester. Okay, so we will just try to connect with the other two. We know that this is normally open. If something is pressing the limit switch, then you will find the tester is working, meaning this is normally closed. And if we change this one to another contact, so the tester is working, meaning this one is normally closed. And if something is pressing the limit switch, then it will open the contact. Meaning to say this one is normally open and this one is normally closed. We know that this yellow color is common and the rest are the contacts going to the system. In our electrohydraulic system, we have the hydraulic diagram and we have also the electrical circuit diagram which is posted here. Now we are going to rewire this one so that we will run the system. We will run the piston by moving from here, going there, and then retract through our hydraulic pump. We will just follow what is in the diagram to connect the wire. The power supply of the electrical circuit, and we have the source. This one, we will just plug it into the outlet. It is to 20 volts, converted into 24 volts DC. So we have now here the supply of these two going into the electrical circuit. At the moment, our electrical connections is still empty. There are no connections because there are no wire cables attached with it. So, by following this diagram, we will now connect the wire. In our diagram, we have here the source, 24 volts. Then, there is a connection going into the start button one. So now, with this 24 volts, we have now here the source. So. I connected one wire. We will put this one into the start button one here with these two terminals. Now I connected the wire coming from the source going into the start button one here and then I have another wire again. According to our diagram, the second wire from here from the start button goes into the limit switch two. So now we will go with the limit switch to this one. Okay, so limit switch 2. So I have now the wire connected into the limit switch. From limit switch, here are the connections wherein we can connect our wire. Okay, since it is limit switch 2, then we will connect this one into limit switch 2. Here, this yellow line, this is the connection coming from the start button 1. So we will go with the common. So now the yellow wire here is the common okay and we know already the, where is the normally closed contact so i have here now the wire which is to be connected into the directional valve k1 we have these two solenoids this is solenoid k1 solenoid k2 so we will connect the wire here into the solenoid now we connected the wire into our solenoid k1 this one the other wire is going to be connected at the return line of our source voltage which is our negative in our diagram we have here the solenoid so the wire now the other wire is going to the ground or zero volts zero voltage we did the first connections of the first circuit complete in our diagram this is our first column this is our first circuit we have here the start button one the limit switch two and the solenoid k1 so from the source it is already completed the first wiring connections. Now we will do this part, the second circuit for this hydraulic uh, control system. Now we have completed the electrical wirings of the electrohydraulic control circuit. With our diagram here, we have the start button 1, start button 2. We have here the green color which is the start button 1 and start button 2. We will not utilize this red color or what we call this stop button because there is no such stop button in our diagram we just only use the green color which is the start button we have here the sb1 or start button one sb2 start button two or ls2 and ls1 which represents the limit switch we have here the limit switch one limit switch two and we have the k1 which is the solenoid k1 and we have the solenoid k2 which is here this is our solenoid K1 and this is our solenoid K2 and here are the connections. Now 
We have here the wirings completed. We will run now the system. Our electrical uh, electrohydraulic trainer is ready to run. So we will start now what we did with our wiring connection. So here we have here the switch on button. So power on. We are going to start. And here <coughs> you hear the sounds. This is the normal sound of the hydraulic system. Maingay, you know? Masakit sa tenga. Pero that is normal. In the engine room, you will hear again with uh, too many sounds. The hydraulic system is running. So, we can also see here at the pressure. You see, there is pressure. The hydraulic system is ready. Now, we are going to switch on the electrical circuit. We have here the circuit breaker. So we should own this one to complete the diagram. So now we will start to run the system. I am now going to push the button here. While pressing the button, you will see the piston is moving outward. Then presses the limit switch to or LS2. While pressing the start button in the directional valve, there is also a response light. You will see there is light in the solenoid K1, meaning the solenoid is working. The piston now presses the limit switch 2, meaning that this limit switch 2 in our diagram is open. So there is no more current flowing through because the circuit is open, so the current cannot flow through and it de-energizes our solenoid. Now, we will go with the circuit number two to retract our piston inward. Okay, so we are going to push this button. By just pushing this button, you will see the piston being retract retracted or it goes inward, leaving the limit switch two and the open position goes back into normally closed. And then now the piston is pressing the limit switch one, which is coming from normally closed. It op now it opens the contact. While pressing the start button number two or SP2 in our directional valve, you will find the response light where it works, where the solenoid works. You see, there is a light in the solenoid, meaning the solenoid is working. So that's it you will see that the piston is moving. Okay. And our, our directional valve is also making response with our buttons. So, we have here the start button one. Start button 2. Again, I have started the simulator so that we know how does the manual push button works. So, from here, we have to push the button and the piston is working. Okay. And from here, I will have to push the button and the piston works. Now, let's try to simulate that the electrical system uh, may be failed, not working. So let's start with the switch of the electrical system. So now the button is not working. Here, not working. The button I push, and the piston is not working. Okay, so, not working, meaning to say there is a failure of the electrical system, but is the system, hydraulic system works. Okay, so let's find it out and let's make sure that this button here, push button, if it works or not. Okay, because there is a symbol here, manual push button. I'm going to push this one. Okay, so I push. So, I push this one and then try to check the piston, okay? 
Okay? So I'm posting this one. And let's try to check it. Meaning to say, the directional valve works even without the electrical. But of course, electrical is an automation, uh, automatic side of the system. So we needed to, if, if the electrical system fails, we needed to rectify because it is being controlled by the controller. So meaning, uh, this is only manual possibility uh, to move the, the piston to, is through manual. So if we push this button, it is called manual. Manual push button. Okay? So we are through with our experimentation with our laboratory trainer. Now we are going to switch off everything.